Charles Stuart Purnell was born on the 27th of June, 1846, right at the beginning of the Great Famine in Ireland. He was a landlord in a country of poor tenant farmers, a Protestant in a land where the vast majority of people were Catholic. He was from neither their class nor their religion, yet to these people he was a hero. They called him the uncrowned King of Ireland. Purnell was born in the Avondale estate of Cuyen County, Wicklow. He came from a privileged background, but as a child, he witnessed horrific scenes of people starving to death along the roads of his own county. This made a profound impression on him and influenced the rest of his life. He recognised very early on that although he was a landlord himself, the landlord-tenant relationship in Ireland was deeply flawed. He believed tenants needed to be given security and rights, and this simple conviction affected the course of his life and changed the course of Irish history. As a teenager, Parnell was educated at several boarding schools in England. However, he never felt at home there. He felt like an outsider, tended to be a loner. Later, he studied at Bank College in Cambridge. He was a proud young man and didn't like the English attitude to Ireland. He had several rows with fellow students and lecturers and eventually was glad to get out of the place and back home to Ireland. He enjoyed the social scene in Dublin and Wicklow and became keenly aware of political developments then taking place. In 1870, when Parnell was just 24 years of age, Sir Isaac Butt founded the Home Rule Association. Parnell was also keenly aware of Fenian activity throughout the country and the intense anger that existed in the aftermath of the Great Famine. He used his political connections and won a seat in the House of Commons in 1875 at the age of 30. He soon recognised the importance of the obstruction policy being conducted in the House by Joseph Bigger, an MP and merchant from Belfast. Parnell, and along with another few MPs, joined Bigger and they blocked the business of Parliament in order to focus attention on Irish grievances. This strategy was quite effective and in fact it drew international attention to the Irish cause. In September 1877, at the age of 32, Parnell became president of the Home Rule Confederation of Great Britain and Ireland. Meanwhile, outside of Parliament, Parnell joined forces with another emerging political activist, Michael Davitt from Mayo. In 1879, Parnell and, and Davitt, between them, set up the Land League and to fight for better rights for Irish tenant farmers. Davitt agreed to have Parnell becoming president of the League, as this would give uh, the League greater impact in Parliament in Westminster. By the early 1880s, fears of a second potato crop failure caused alarm and fear throughout the country. These fears fueled violent attacks on landlords throughout the country and the Land League developed a policy of boycotting any farmer who evicted tenants and insisted that such farms be left idle. Purnell strongly supported this policy and encouraged absolute isolation of, of landlords who evicted unfairly and farmers who rented such land. <coughs> this combination of activity, both inside and outside Parliament, pressurised the British Prime Minister Gladstone into passing the second Land Act of August 1881. This act was very important to Irish farmers, but for Parnell and the Irish Land League leaders, it didn't go far enough. Parnell made several speeches. However, it was a serious advance on the first Land Act of 1870 as it gave farmers the right to rent, to fix rents and to buy out their holdings. He was arrested in October 1881 as a result of several speeches he made, along with several of the other leaders of the Land League. Uh, the government was convinced that they were attempting to ruin the entire act. However, six months later, in April 1882, he agreed a secret deal with Gladstone. This is known as the Kilmainham Treaty. Parnell agreed that he, he would actually use his influence to quell the violence in the countryside. And per, and Gladstone promised to have the courts look into a rent reduction for over 100,000 tenant farmers who were in rent arrears. However, the Kilmainham deal almost unraveled immediately a month later with the Phoenix Park murders in May 1882. Lord Cavendish and his assistant, his undersecretary, were killed by a small Fenian group known as the Invincibles. Parnell was largely blamed for these murders and for, for the inspiring rhetoric which he carried on with in recent times. He was blamed by London politicians. But uh, thereafter, he continued to build alliances with uh, the Liberal Party in London and managed to get the Third Land Act passed in August 1882. In 1882 also, Parnell officially took over the leadership of the Irish Parliamentary Party. 
This, together with his role as president of the Land League, made him the unrivaled leader of Irish nationalism. He was the voice of the people. In the following years, he united the Parliamentary Party into a powerful force in Westminster. He created an alliance with the Liberal Party in England. The Party won, the Irish Party won 85 seats in the 1885 election and held the balance of power at Westminster. He used this to force the Liberal Party to introduce the first Home Rule Bill in 1886. This was a major development in Irish politics. It was a recognition that Ireland was a separate state. It had huge implications for the future. However, in the immediate term, the bill was defeated by a combination of Conservatives and Unionist Liberals. In 1890, Captain William O'Shea, a fellow MP, filed for divorce and named Purnell as his wife's lover. The affair caused both the British Prime Minister Dadstone and the Catholic Church in Ireland to turn against Parnell. His opponents also used the affair to undermine the nationalist cause. In October 1990, Parnell lost a vote of confidence in his own party, and this caused him to lose the leadership of the party. He formed another party, the Irish National Federation, but it was never able to match his old party. So Parnell was an inspirational figure in Irish history. He played a crucial role in United the the Irish Parliamentary Party in London and made them into a fighting force. He was also the leader of the Land League and successfully pressurised the British government into granting the important Second Land Act of 1881, which was very important to Irish farming. In 1886, Parnell convinced or pressurised rather Gladstone, the British Prime Minister, to introduce the first Home Rule Bill to the House of Commons. These combined actions laid the basis for Irish nationalism in the future, but Pernell didn't live to see these developments. He was something of a tragic figure. There are several streets and roads named after him in Ireland. This monument in Dublin has an inscription, was one of his speeches which reads, No man has a right to fix the boundary to the march of a nation. No man has a right to say to his fellow countrymen, Thus far shall thou go, but no further. We have never attempted to set the knee plus ultra to the progress of Ireland's nationhood, and we never shall. Parnell is considered one of Ireland's most inspirational leaders. However, he is also a tragic figure and died at the age of 45 in 1891. So that's it for today. That's the story about Parnell. There's a lot more detail if you want to buy some books on it. There's some very wonderful books written about Parnell. He was a great inspirational figure. He inspired people like De Valera, Porrick Pierce, Roger Casement, and the future generation. He didn't live to see, see that, but he was one of the great inspirational figures of Irish nationalism. So I'll be doing uh, future videos about some of these other people, and uh, please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to see that. Thanks for watching for today. Goodbye.